Hi, my name's Tess and I'm one of the two designers at Polly. We're a design-based business in Sydney and we design a range of jewellery and homewares using uh, sustainable materials and processes. Maya and I met at university in 1999 and we studied industrial design together. Um, we loved working together and we collaborated on a lot of projects and design competitions. Both of us were fortunate enough when we graduated from uni to get full-time placements in different design consultancies, which was terrific and amazing. The only shortfall was that we couldn't even talk about our work anymore and they were in direct competition and everything was strictly confidential and we really, we found that we had a really complementary skill set so we really wanted to keep working together. So we started a hobby on the side with no intention of it ever being a, a job or a career or even a business. We just wanted to do something creative together. We wanted to do something that we enjoyed making, we could do it by hand that we would use ourselves and that we could afford. And that was really important, like accessibility and affordability were important values to us in what we made. So we started Polly as a hobby. It was ideal because we had just finished university, so we were fresh and idealistic. We had no inhibitions or previous experiences to cloud the way we went forward. We were very open-minded. We were also fortunate because we had full-time jobs, so we didn't need any financial remuneration from our hobby. So we could reinvest any profits straight back into Polly, which was a real luxury in hindsight, but a really, really fantastic way to get started. So we built equity in our own business without paying ourselves for about five years. And then we got to the point we had been doing everything on the side. So we'd stay up late making jewellery, do the markets every weekend. Before work, we'd meet at the gym car park and collate orders with invoices, drop them off at the post box at lunchtime, sit in our hot little cars in our respective employers' car parks, calling back customers who had left voicemails, taking annual leave to go to trade shows. And so it got to the point after about five years where we had had a great time in our full-time jobs, but we had to choose between this hobby that had inadvertently grown into this demanding business or our full-time jobs and so we took the plunge to go full-time on Polly. Um, it was quite a scary step for us because we'd never drawn a wage from Polly before and we didn't know if we'd be able to support ourselves or if we'd need to do some lecturing at uni or get a job in a cafe so it was a little bit scary but it was so exciting and we both did it in fairly quick succession and it was just the most liberating experience my sister Anna, who's the studio manager here, was our first employee and at the time we worked from home. So we had a growing number of friends who were either pregnant or had were nursing young babies came to work for us. So they work in the dining room and they sort of spilled out all over the house. And um, it was amazing though. Like suddenly we had a team of people. They were flexible and friendly. There was always a cup of tea. We'd make a communal lunch together and there was a really – beautiful atmosphere and we could see quite quickly the culture that we wanted to make in our small business and it was like the most exciting year of our business I think because we took the plunge to go full-time within a few months we were on a airplane going to New York to the gift show on this big adventure and suddenly we had a team of friends and then at the end of that year we realized we need to move out of the spare bedroom and the dining room and we moved to the studio in Stanmore. For us I think the real satisfaction or success comes from seeing someone else wearing your jewellery. So we say seeing a stranger or someone that you admire wearing your jewellery just totally puts you on cloud nine and it still does and you could be having an average day for whatever reason and you'll see someone walking down the street wearing your jewellery and it just gives you such a buzz. It uh, really endorses what you do that someone's liked it. And we know we've sold thousands and thousands of pieces of jewellery and they've been shipped to hundreds of stores around the world and around Australia. So it's not that we don't know that they're out there, but seeing someone wear your jewellery just really just gives you the best feeling. So in the 10 years that we've been in business and on this sort of journey that is poly, we've learnt many things. For example, at the start, you sort of need to wear every hat 
and do every task in a small business. But it, there becomes a point when it is better to admit that someone else is better at doing that and it's a good time to call in the experts. So for us that was engaging a web developer or getting a professional photographer and professional model and outsourcing the tasks that you don't love doing yourself, you're not passionate about, like the bookkeeping. You know, at the start we did all of those nitty-gritty tasks and it's liberating to get to the point when you can engage someone else and they generally do a better job than you do although it's hard to admit it and it's hard to pay someone sometimes to do something you can do yourself but it does allow you time to focus on what you're really good at and what you're really passionate about. Another thing that I suppose surprised us is that in a design-based business the actual design is a really small part of your daily tasks and that there are so many other tasks in running a small business and that they can be so interesting and rewarding in their own, even though they're not what you initially set out to do. And I think that highlights to us how we might only design a new range for sort of 10% of our our time. And it's a really challenging time to be purely creative is really challenging, whereas you do have a lot of other skills that you can use, whether it's the door opening... (laughs) Whether it's, you know, building your social media or your blog or liaising with suppliers or talking to customers, doing trade shows and those sorts of things. We learnt along the way that it is possible to do what you love and it is so rewarding and it's more rewarding than just earning a wage. You can create your own company culture. So we've been able, we've had five poly babies in our studio over the last seven years and it's been fantastic to build a lifestyle company where we can have flexible days of the week we can bring our children to work we can bring our pets to work there can be a bit of chaos and that's okay that we've built that environment I think we're really lucky in in terms of marketing and promoting Polly that's one of the areas where we knew it's it's really hard to talk about your own products and promote yourself and it you know sometimes as a designer it's hard to say this is wonderful of your own design. So that's one of the areas where we sort of knew to call in the experts. And it's interesting because we trialled different sort of PR alternatives for a long time doing it by ourselves. And it was one of those tasks that we often avoided and procrastinated about because it was something that we weren't passionate about. We weren't great at selling ourselves to the media. And we did try a larger PR consultancy and we actually found a Australian girl living in New York was the best solution for us Kate, who does our PR from New York, all over the world, does such a great job because she gets poly and she's passionate about promoting it and she really understands the poly persona and knows where to pitch that to and she just does such a terrific job. We're big list makers and generally we find the most efficient way is to sort of verbally spew everything you need to get done, make a list and then you can start the satisfying process of ticking things off that list Avoiding a task or just the nature of delaying a task ends up making that task take longer because you've got to think about it every time you think about delaying it. So for us, I think being time poor mothers, we really have to be as efficient as we can be making lists and lists and crossing things off and prioritizing what's important in our, in our day and how we can get it done. I think also being a mum and running a small business, you have to learn to delegate. You can't simply do everything yourself anymore and it's such a hard lesson to learn to delegate but it's so liberating and rewarding when you've got someone else you can trust and you can leave them with a task and they do it beautifully and you can do what you really need to get done that day. Sometimes being a mum, you're quite tired and it can be hard to put on your creative hat and feel inspired. Our sort of mentality is you just got to put pen to paper and lose your inhibitions and... And just put it down. No one's going to judge you on it. And there's an interesting third drawdown tea towel, which has this quote, and it says, modern art equals I could do that plus yeah, but you didn't. And it's such an interesting saying because it's so true. People can be so judgmental, but unless they put pen to paper, they haven't done it. And I think it's easy to think, oh, I'm tired or I'm not inspired. I've been at home with the kids or I've hardly left the house. I'm what am I going to design? But just putting pen to paper can be the most inspiring thing. I think riding the ups and downs of running your own business is so much easier with a business partner. And we're in a lucky situation because we can support each other and 
inspire each other because there can be periods where you don't feel inspired or you're stressed about sales or the economy or you're just really tired because your baby's been up all night and having someone that you can talk to or have a cup of tea with makes such a difference and I think you know friends or colleagues or neighbours or partners could play the same role as a business partner but I think we're really fortunate that we've had that constant support for each other over the years. We've never really had a formal mentor but one person that's really inspired us is Shelley Simpson from Mud and we met Shelley years ago at a trade show and I think we helped Shelley pack up her trade show and she was running late for her aeroplane and we sort of hit it off since then and Shelley's really has played an informal sort of mentor role for us. Mud is an amazing company and she has such beautiful design sensibility. She has so much integrity in what she makes but she's also so honest and real about her business experiences and When we were exporting a lot to the States, we would travel and stay with Shelley. We went to Zurich together and New York together, and it's just been amazing that she's been so open to us and sharing with her experiences. Running a creative business can be stressful, and I think the best way for us in coping with that is surrounding ourselves with people that care and that you can rely on. In our studio, there's about six other women that work with us and they're always there for a hug or a cup of tea. But if all else fails, I think the same sort of solution that young mums use is just going for a walk and getting some fresh air and getting some perspective on a situation. It can be so easy to sort of rile yourself into a downward spiral of anxiousness and it's not productive and just taking some time out getting some fresh air, hearing the leaves rustle in the trees can be so beneficial and then you can come back with a bit of perspective and tackle that task or that issue or whatever's causing you that stress. If you do what you love, it really shows and you can promote what you love and you want to spend a lot of time on it. It's not just a job to you, it's a sort of lifestyle and a way of life and by following your passions and, you know, perhaps starting your own creative business, if you really love it, then it will come and you will, you know, you might have hurdles but you will get there and it's such a rewarding experience to manage yourself, create a culture that you like, create something that you like, you know, and surround yourself with people that you like, like to build your own team that you've chosen is such a rewarding thing. It's great to have a job where you want to go to work every day. Like no one at Polly is ever sick, <laughs> you know, it's, it's, and that sort of shows how much of that is sort of negativity or anxiousness about going to work. It's, you know, to go to a positive environment every day is the best thing. You spend so much time at work and to be proud of what you do means so much. If you love what you do, then you project that and people are loyal and passionate about your business also and it, such a rewarding thing really is.